So this was all the doodling I did to get the design, and this was my design I came up with for this guitar I was making. So I got some wood that was aged in my brother's garage, and it was actually just shelving, and I split them on an angle, so that way those pieces would come together and have a point, instead of just having straight gear run through the whole thing. So I really like how these turned out with those grains meeting together and coming to those points. It looks beautiful, I love it. Also, you can notice right there that grain is kind of messed up. When you go against the grain, it breaks it up instead of slices it. So you always want to be really careful watching which way your grain's going so that when you're cutting in, you get a smooth cut instead of you know splitting up. And this is how thin I got it just from the, the start. I, I brought it down more as I kept going to get that thinner as well. And then that right there, those, those gills, those, those dips use, I use the 90 degree disc grinder and just ground those out. And then I drilled holes in and carved out those gills so you can see through right there. I had to carve those out and then carve the back out so I could meet in the middle. So that way, those are gonna leave me the sound holes. Instead of having a big hole in the middle, those are the sound holes. So it was kind of a gamble. I was hoping it'd still sound good. I think it did in the end. Digging that out, that whole pile of it was in there. It takes a lot of wood removal. Now I have it arced. What's gonna happen next is just all the sanding work. I gotta sand out all those divots and everything so that way the whole thing's turned smooth. You can see how not smooth it is when I turn it to the light like that. It's kind of cool, the grain of these guys matched up like perfectly a couple times. It just looks cool. I got poked by a sliver, bled a little bit. To not make sure that you're getting an even thickness, Put a flashlight on the far side. It's pretty thin right there. Yeah, right there it's pretty thin, but then it's there. There's the, uh, but I kind of want to leave it like that because this is going to be where the neck is, so I don't want a lot of solid wood there. To get the straight, I just use a battery-powered circular saw, a little cheap one. It's probably 15 years old, but it did the job. So I cut it. And then I also used it to cut out this right here. I cut on this side, flipped it, cut on that side, and then cut in here and there. Got rid of that. So I'm doing this without a bandsaw or table saw. It would make it a lot easier if I had those. A little bit of a bevel. <clears throat> I cut in just a tad so I'd have like a, a set point. I'm doing all this also without a bandsaw. I cut some of this like a, this here and this here with my little cheap little coping saw, but all my blades are broken. Maple, it's hard stuff. So I'm going to do this with the chop saw. My brother has one of those to cut those two, cut the, two, the front and back off this headstock. And then it'll be just lots of fun carving work and measuring to make sure I have all the tuning pegs in the right place. So this is what it's going to kind of look like. I figured it out. <clears throat> what I did was I drilled holes. So first I drilled these holes, right? No saw marks. Unfortunately, I, <laughs> I do all this with a little hand coping saw, so not super straight, but it'll look good on the outside. This is gonna go right there, okay? The holes will drill through here, and then I'll cut little slits up. So here, it will be an upside down keyhole. A hole here with a little slit going up. So, string goes through there. 
drops down into there. And then you can see the bead get stuck. You can't pull through because I have that washer there. You slip through it. And you can put all the tension you want. For the classical, or the, the regular nylon ones at the bottom, I gotta tie a knot, put a bead on it so then it can't get through that hole. Then the same principle. I run it through the hole. Make sure it's all the way through. Slide it through the crack. Make sure I just pull it up like that. Boom. So that's how I'm gonna make my vanishing string hole. So there should be a hole with a little slit, hole with a little slit, hole with a little slit, with this guy on the back side. Like that. Got this guy with little shims, so it's applying pressure here, right, right there underneath this, here, and gluing it in. The last step of gluing this together. a mess of clamps. All right, so now Instruments done. So I have it varnished. You've got, you can see all the gloss on there. You can see all the fun grain going on, especially, at least for me in the back, turned out really good. There are some imperfections, things like the, these two, these three or four bend marks on the side. It's from when I was bending and I had to kind of jimmy rig, but that's what kind of happens sometimes when you have to make it affordable because I had to do all that with. Uh, you know, recycled materials, so. Yeah? What's up?